Blog Talk Radio. Hello, my name is Elder Price, and I would like to share with you the most amazing book. Hello, my name is Elder Grant. It's a book about America a long, long time ago. It has so many awesome parts. You simply won't believe how much this book can change your life. Hello, my name is Elder Green. I would like to share with you this book of Jesus Christ. Hello, my name is Elder Young. Hello, did you know that Jesus lived here in the USA? You can read all about it now. Hello, in this nifty book, it's free. No, you don't have to pay. Hello, hello, my name is Elder Smith. Hello, my name is Elder Bundy. Well, it used to be when I rang doorbells. Now it's Doug Bundy. And uh, this is Voices from the Dust Radio for Thursday, the 7th day of November 2013. We welcome you to our show today where we share the reason for the hope that lies within us, the reason why the Latter-day Saints are Christians, and the reason why you should be too. Yesterday, we finished with the first article of seven articles of the Bible, The Witness of Judah. These articles entitled The Witness of Judah, quote-unquote, are found on our website, uh, voicesfromthedust.org. That's voicesfromthedust.org. Just go there and click on the menu item, The Witness of Judah, quote-unquote, to access to access them, and then uh, you can follow along with us in our study today. Well, the first article uh, that we have uh, been studying for the last few days introduces Joseph Smith Jr. as the choice seer, quote-unquote, of God, who in conjunction with the ancient seer Enoch before him was sent of God to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah clothed in the brightness of his glory. The Enoch, and like Enoch and Moses, Joseph spoke face-to-face with the God of Israel, And he learned firsthand how the Lord is set about to gather in his long-dispersed people preparatory to his coming to judge the world, destroy the wicked, and usher in the long-anticipated millennium of peace. To understand how all this fits into the work of the Lord from the beginning, we uh, we start with the witness of Judah, with the baptism of Adam, and Eve, and the explanation of why it is necessary. So uh, let's begin our study this morning then with the second article under the witness of Judah in the menu of our website entitled The Plan of Salvation. Just click on the witness of Judah and then you'll see underneath that The Plan of Salvation. Click on that and then that will take you to our text for the day. Now, I'm going to play a rather long clip first, about six minutes, which includes the clip we heard yesterday where Enoch goes to preach the gospel to the people so we can establish the the context again and then we'll continue uh, with our um, uh, with the, the new material for today. So from the beginning, the gospel was preached through the Son of God. This is the important thing to understand. It wasn't something that started with the New Testament, but with Adam. Hence, it is known as the Word. It is the Word of life. It was with the Son of God from the beginning. He is the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is why the Apostle John called him the Savior, the Word. He called him the Word because all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, John says, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. According to the record of Moses now, which is has come to us through the prophet Joseph Smith, the prophet Enoch, the seer Enoch, testified that our father Adam taught these things, and many have believed and become the sons of God and many have believed not and have perished in their sins and are looking forth with fear in torment for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God to be poured out upon them. 
So those that did not rebel, though, were taught the word of life, which Enoch explains, or uh, which explains as Enoch testified, and then we'll play that clip. Lived after he begat Enoch 800 years, and begat sons and daughters. And Jared taught Enoch in all the ways of God. And this is the genealogy of the sons of Adam, who was the son of God, with whom God himself conversed. And they were preachers of righteousness, and spake and prophesied, and called upon all men everywhere to repent. And faith was taught unto the children of men. And it came to pass that all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And Enoch lived sixty-five years, and begat Methuselah. And it came to pass that Enoch journeyed in the land among the people. And as he journeyed, the Spirit of God descended out of heaven and abode upon him. And he heard a voice from heaven saying, Enoch, my son, prophesy unto this people, and say unto them, Repent, for thus saith the Lord. I am angry with this people, and my fierce anger is kindled against them, for their hearts have waxed hard, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes cannot see afar off. And for these many generations, ever since the day that I created them, have they gone astray, and have denied me, and have sought their own counsels in the dark, and in their own abominations have they devised murder, and have not kept the commandments which I gave unto their father Adam. Wherefore they have forsworn themselves, and by their oaths they have brought upon themselves death, and a hell I have prepared for them, if they repent not. And this is a decree which I have sent forth in the beginning of the world from my own mouth, from the foundation thereof. And by the mouths of my servants, thy fathers, have I decreed it, even as it shall be sent forth in the world unto the ends thereof. And when Enoch had heard these words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord, and spake before the Lord, saying, Why is it that I have found favor in thy sight, and am but a lad? And all the people hate me, for I am slow of speech. Wherefore am I thy servant? And the Lord said unto Enoch, Go forth, and do as I have commanded thee, and no man shall pierce thee. Open thy mouth, and it shall be filled, and I will give thee utterance, for all flesh is in my hands. And I will do as seemeth me good. Say unto this people, Choose ye this day to serve the Lord God who made you. Behold, my spirit is upon you, wherefore all thy words will I justify. And the mountain shall flee before you, and the river shall turn from their course, and thou shalt abide in me, and I in you. Therefore walk with me. And the Lord spake unto Enoch, and said unto him, Anoint thine eyes with clay, and wash them, and thou shalt see. And he did so. And he beheld the spirits that God had created, and he beheld also things which were not visible to the natural eye. And from thenceforth came the saying abroad in the land, A seer hath the Lord raised up unto his people. And it came to pass that Enoch went forth in the land among the people, standing upon the hills and the high places, and cried with a loud voice, testifying against their works. And all men were offended because of him. And they came forth to hear him upon the high places, saying unto the tent keepers, Tarry ye here, and keep the tents, while we go yonder to behold the seer. For he prophesieth, and there is a strange thing in the land. A wild man hath come among us. And it came to pass, when they heard him, no man laid hands on him, for fear came on all them that heard him, for he walked with God. And there came a man unto him, whose name was Mahijah, and said unto him, Tell us plainly who thou art, and from whence thou comest. And he said unto them, I came out from the land of Canaan, the land of my fathers, a land of righteousness unto this day. And my father taught me in all the ways of God. And it came to pass, as I journeyed from the land of Canaan by the sea east, I beheld a vision, and lo, the heavens I saw, and the Lord spake with me, and gave me commandment. Wherefore, for this cause, to keep the commandment, I speak forth these words. 
And Enoch continued his speech, saying, The Lord which spake with me, the same is the God of heaven, and he is my God and your God, and ye are my brethren. And why counsel ye yourselves, and deny the God of heaven? The heavens he made, the earth is his footstool, and the foundation thereof is his. Behold, he laid it, an host of men hath he brought in upon the face thereof. And death hath come upon our fathers. Nevertheless, we know them, and cannot deny. And even the first of all we know, even Adam. For a book of remembrance we have written among us, according to the pattern given by the finger of God. And it is given in our own language. And as Enoch spake forth the words of God, the people trembled, and could not stand in his presence. And he said unto them, Because that Adam fell, we are. And by his fall came death, and we are made partakers of misery and woe. Behold, Satan hath come among the children of men, and tempteth them to worship him. And men have become carnal, sensual, and devilish, and are shut out from the presence of God. But God hath made known unto our fathers that all men must repent. And he called upon our father Adam by his own voice, saying, I am God, I made the world, and men before they were in the flesh. And he also said unto him, If thou wilt turn unto me, and hearken unto my voice, and believe, and repent of all thy transgressions, and be baptized even in water, in the name of mine only begotten Son, who is full of grace and truth, which is Jesus Christ, the only name which shall be given under heaven, whereby salvation shall come unto the children of men, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, asking all things in his name, and whatsoever ye shall ask, it shall be given you. Wow, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is so impressive, this is so powerful. Uh, th th this is exactly the situation that we're in today. Men have counseled among themselves and uh, denied the God of heaven. And uh, the sins that uh, were in the days uh, of Enoch are the same as now the, the sins that we see today. Where uh, We're trying to make known uh, that... Uh, Adam is actually our father. He says, we have a record. I can imagine them. They probably found fossils or whatever, and they were, you know, their counsels among themselves, as he says, were probably teachings that the world began millions of years ago or something or whatever. And so he says, no, no, we have a record. We have the testimony. We have the witness. We've written it down here. We know our fathers, and we know the first of all, the first father was Adam and uh he was in the Garden of Eden, and he fell, and by his fall came death, and we are made partakers of misery and woe. That is the truth that they tried to deny, you see. And uh, Satan has come among the children of men and, and tempt, tempted them to worship him. And that's what they're doing today. That's what the Illuminati is all about. And uh, it's just amazing how when your eyes are open, you can see with clarity the great truth that uh, Enoch was teaching here and uh, he, especially this part where he says if uh, uh, the, if they will believe the Lord turned to Adam and said hearken unto my voice and believe and repent of all thy transgressions and be baptized even in water in the name of mine only begotten son who is full of grace and truth, which is Jesus Christ, the only name which shall be given under heaven, whereby salvation shall come unto the children of men. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, asking all things in his name, and whatsoever ye shall ask, it shall be given you. Whoa, there's the gospel of Jesus Christ, preached to the first of all, Adam, and all those before the flood. So thus we see that he was taught, Adam was taught the gospel of Jesus Christ from the beginning of time. And according to the testimony of Enoch, he was commanded to teach it to his children. That was the important part. So let's go on to clip two now. And our father Adam spake unto the Lord and said, Why is it that men must repent and be baptized in water? And the Lord said unto Adam, Behold, I have forgiven thee thy transgression in the garden of Eden. 
Hence came the saying abroad among the people, that the Son of God hath atoned for original guilt, wherein the sins of the parents cannot be answered upon the heads of the children. For they are whole from the foundation of the world. And the Lord spake unto Adam, saying, Inasmuch as thy children are conceived in sin, even so, when they begin to grow up, sin conceiveth in their hearts, and they taste the bitter, that they may know to prize the good. Well, um, let me pause at this point to comment on what we have heard, because we can see how important it is that we have uh, inquiring minds uh, that... uh, we don't just accept things on blind faith, as many people believe. Uh, Adam's question was motivated by a desire to learn more, not to object or or to rebel. This is important, not only because it gives the Lord greater opportunity than to expound on the truth, but it also uh, teaches us how faith works. It's not a blind acceptance of dogma, as many people uh, uh, have been taught to believe, have been persuaded to believe, but rather it is an uh, uh, an act of uh, of uh, faith, an act of confidence, we might say, uh, that uh, is built on knowledge. The more knowledge of truth one has, the more confidence or faith he has to act in accordance with that truth. Now, note as we continue the clip how much Adam learns about the things that uh, that trouble the world now. And all of this, um, uh, uh, just a minute, I'm having trouble here. Uh, and all of this from his question that was grounded in, in faith. Now, um, I have this uh, second clip to play, but... The, The uh, ridiculous interface to load these clips is failing, of course, right when I need to be able to load the one. Well, I'll have to read it. Uh, It's unfortunate, but their software is really buggy. All right, so clip three would have said, and it is given unto them, to know good from evil, wherefore they are agents unto themselves and have been given, and I have given unto you another law and commandment. Wherefore, teach it unto your children that all men everywhere must repent, or they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God, for no unclean thing can dwell there or dwell in his presence, for in the language of Adam, man of holiness is his name, And the name of his only begotten is the Son of Man, even Jesus Christ, the righteous judge, who shall come in the meridian of time. Therefore, I give unto you a commandment to teach these things freely unto your children, saying, that by reason of transgression cometh the fall, which fall bringeth death. And inasmuch as ye were born into the world by water and blood and the Spirit which I have made, and so become of dust a living soul, even so ye must be born again into the kingdom of heaven, of water and of the Spirit, and be cleansed by blood, even the blood of mine only begotten, that ye may be sanctified from all sin, and enjoy the words of eternal life in this world, and eternal life in the world to come, even immortal glory. Wow. Uh, isn't that is that clear and see the latter day saints are stomped upon uh, by uh, those who have rebelled though especially the ex-mormons who say that this is not taught uh in the church that it is not taught that they must be born again and sanctified uh from all sin by by the fire and the holy ghost but it's explained very clearly and taught very from the beginning in the in the church that the Father has established in these latter days. All right, well, uh, continuing on in the scripture. For by the water ye keep the commandment, by the Spirit ye are justified, and by the blood ye are sanctified. 
Therefore it is given to abide in you the record of heaven, the comforter, the peaceable things of immortal glory, the truth of all things, that which quickeneth all things, that which maketh alive all things, that which knoweth all things, and hath all power according to wisdom, mercy, truth, justice, and judgment. And now behold, I say unto you, this is the plan of salvation unto all men through the blood of mine only begotten who shall come in the meridian of time. All right, now I'm going to repeat that. And now behold, I say unto you this, what we've just read, where a man must be born again and keep the commandment by the water and by the spirit and then by uh, by those be sanctified and receive the record of heaven, the comforter, the peaceable things of immortal glory, the truth of all things that dwells in them from that point on. And now, behold, I say unto you, this is the plan of salvation unto all men through the blood. See, it's only possible through the blood of mine only begotten who shall come in the meridian of time. And behold, all things have their likeness, and all things are created and made to bear record of me, both things which are temporal and things which are spiritual, things which are in the heavens above, and things which are on the earth, and things which are in the earth, and things which are under the earth, both above and beneath. All things bear record of me. Now, that's the end of the quotation, and that comes from the book of Moses in the Pearl of Great Price, chapter 6, verses 53 through 63. And this is one of the standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so we see that Adam was commanded to teach these things to his children. Now, maybe the church is not doing as good a job as they ought to do, but, boy, it's so easy to stand off and and uh, be critical. These people, if they maybe they weren't taught from the pulpit uh, as effectively as they think they ought to be, but they have the records. They can read the scriptures. How is it that they don't know these things? They're nothing, even if they were never, but they were taught from the pulpit. But even had they not been, they had the scriptures, and they were commanded and uh, of God to read and study, and their parents taught them to read and study the scriptures from their childhood. And there's no way they could not have read these things had they been faithful. So I find their objections and their fighting against the, uh, the church and, and the establishment of Zion very ingenuous. Uh, but anyway, and so we see that Adam was commanded to teach his children and that they must be born again, that they must exercise faith in God and in his Christ through repentance from sin and baptism by water and the Holy Ghost long before the coming of Jesus in the flesh. Accordingly, Adam was the first man to be baptized, setting an example for all his children to follow. Now, let me see if uh, by somehow, some way, I can uh, get this thing to recognize uh, my audio clip so that I can load the, uh, the last one we want. Yeah, okay, now it's working. So, anyway, uh, we don't have any callers. Uh, that we can talk to while I do this, but I'm going to try to upload the uh, last clip and uh, perhaps we can play it and uh, it will show us uh, what... uh... Okay, there it's uploaded. Now if I can just... chapter 6 now uh, in the Pearl of Great Price verses 64 through uh, 68 uh, and we'll see how Adam was baptized and what this means and it came to pass when the Lord had spoken with Adam our father that Adam cried unto the Lord and he was caught away by the spirit of the Lord and was carried down into the water and was laid under the water and was brought forth out of the water 
And thus he was baptized, and the Spirit of God descended upon him. And thus he was born of the Spirit, and became quickened in the inner man. And he heard a voice out of heaven saying, Thou art baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. This is the record of the Father and the Son, from henceforth and for ever. And thou art after the order of him who was without beginning of days or end of years, from all eternity to all eternity. Behold, thou art one in me, a son of God, and thus may all become my sons. Amen. Man, how fantastic is that? Excuse me. He says to Adam, Behold, thou art one in me, a son of God, and thus may all become my sons. Of course, though Satan comes among the children of men, even though Adam must have taught them very clearly from the beginning, saying, Believe it not, and many believed it not, but unto as many as believed him gave he eternal life. So that's all it takes to have eternal life is just to believe. How sad that makes our situation. I'm going to go to Al here and see what comments he might have. Uh, good morning, Al. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm fine. Uh, uh, it's a good morning. The sun's out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we have five minutes left, four minutes left. Uh, four minutes. I don't know how long you've been you've been listening to the program. I got angry again with this interface because it told me I didn't have room to upload the clips that I needed to upload when I knew I did, and so I had to fool with it. But I finally got at least the last clip loaded. But uh, isn't that amazing? Is is that as clear as, uh, an exposition of the gospel of Jesus Christ you've ever heard? Yeah, but it takes faith. And if you don't have the, if if you're not, that's why, you know, if you don't have faith, you don't believe. You know, some people like Dowling Thomas, you know, they don't, they see him, you know, they don't, he he walked with Jesus and everything else, but he still wanted to fill his sight because he didn't believe, you know. So when he got, you know, when he came back, and, and that's how people are, you know what I mean? They have to be. Constantly, that's why people change. Even the Book of Mormon, the Bible, everything—they fight and they kill each other. And and for what? The Lord wants them to come here and and uh, just believe in Jesus Christ, but they want to fight with each other. They want to do it their way, you know, because that's the He gives us free will, and by doing that free will, people just seem to, you know, want to go the other direction because they like to. You know, and of course there's Satan there too. And like, you know, during the thousand year reign, well, you know that's going to be a whole different ballgame. And uh, but before Christ comes, we, you know, people need to do that. And the sad part is, that, you know, I caught myself in that same thing again. You know, I come up before the Lord and not praying, not seeking Him, and just doing my own thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we all were for a while, but when we hear these words, if we read, especially those people who leave the church and then fight against it, saying they become born again after they leave, that they were never born again before, (laughs) you know, because for the most part they were baptized when they were eight years old, and of course they didn't understand these things like you do when you're an adult. So, well, we only have a minute left, so... I'm uh, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and and uh, and uh, thank you for your call this morning, Al, and uh, and maybe <laughs> if we can get to an hour-long program, we can uh, talk more about these kinds of things. But hopefully, it's being helpful to study these six articles. So this is the end of the second under uh, the witness of Judah, and uh, then we will. Um, continue uh, tomorrow with the uh, um, third article which is uh, going to cover opposition to the plan of salvation and so again uh, you can access those at our site with the uh, 
voicesfromthedust.org. So have a good day, and pray. I pray that all the Lord's choicest blessings be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>